Hello and welcome to another video in the workshop. Today we're going to have a look at some tools that the old owners of this house left for me. There's quite a lot here so let's get going. So we're just going to start with this pair of pliers or um, wire cutters. They're very stuck at the moment so I'm going to see if I can restore those and get those working again. They do just about work, they're just very stiff. So we're going to try and restore those. I think they'll make quite a nice set. Again, we've got some long nose pliers here. These work, they just need a bit of an oil and a bit of a clean up. But they're quite nice as well, so I want to keep hold of those. Another pair of long nose pliers. They clearly like to long nose pliers around here. They've got quite a lot of pairs of them. So there's all the pliers. We've got basically three. We've got the two long nose pliers and we've also got the wire cutters. They're quite a nice set, so I'm going to sand them all up and make them look brand new. Then we have this, which I believe is a wire stripper and a wire cutter. This is in pretty good working order, it just needs a little bit of an oil in the mechanism. But this is a pretty good tool and I think it will be quite useful. So what I believe you do is you can just cut the wire and obviously strip it to different gauges of wire. So I think this would be quite useful and it's a nice tool to have. Then they also left a junior hacksaw and they also left some blades for it. I've never heard of this company called Roebuck. If anyone's ever heard of them or knows anything about them, I'd really appreciate you putting something in the comments down below. I'm guessing it's some sort of like tool company. It could just be sort of like a um, cheap store, but I don't really know. Never heard of them before, so if anyone knows anything, I'd be interested to know some more about them. But they left 10 pairs of junior hacksaw blades there. Sorry, just 10, not 10 pairs. Um, 10 junior hacksaw blades and a junior hacksaw frame. So always nice to have lots of hacksaws. I've got about five or six of these, but you can never have too many. And the blades are an added bonus as they look to be in fairly good condition and there's only um, and there's no rusty ones in here, so I think they'll be a really big help in the workshop as I had actually run out of those. Again, we've got something else from this company called Roebuck. This is a centre punch, so we're going to have a quick look at that if we can get it open. So this looks to be in fairly good condition, it just needs a little bit of a clean up on the old handle. But I'm quite happy with this and I've not got a centre punch so I think this is going to be a great help in the workshop. I really like these, I've used these before and I think this will be quite a nice little tool to use. It does need a little bit of clean up as there is a bit of rust on the end. But that's not really surprising given they were stored in a metal wall hanging cabinet which was in a sort of um, rotten shed. So I'm not that surprised. It was right at the bottom of the garden where I rescued a cabinet from. But overall, I think this will be a nice tool to use in the workshop. As well as that, they also left a nail punch. So, made by the same company again, Roebuck. And this one's in not so great condition. It's quite a lot more rusty and we're going to have to clean this one up quite a lot. I think what I'll do is I'll get some wet and dry and sort of rub this down, see if I can clean up that actual nail punch part. And then the handle, we'll see what I can do. So it's a 332 size um, nail punch, so I'm guessing that's a fairly good size, I don't really know. It looks quite good though, and we'll give that a go once I've cleaned it all up. Shouldn't take too long to clean these things up. I'm going to try and clean up all of the tools here, as I think it's quite nice to use these older kind of t style tools. Then they left a pair of safety goggles. I don't really know why they left these, but they did. I won't end up using these, so these will probably just go... I don't know what I'm going to do with them, they'll probably just go in the bin, but pair of safety goggles. I've got some really good safety goggles so I don't need these and a nice little sort of pouch for them. So that was there as well. They clearly haven't been used for a while as they're literally, well they were sort of stuck in here before I yanked them out of there. So that's fine, that's all well and good. Um, there's some staples here, they just left a load of staples um, in a little container just in here. They left staples in there. Um, I just poured them out so it'll be interesting to see if there's anything else at the bottom. Probably will keep hold of some of these. You can always use staples, so might as well just keep hold of those. They'll probably work in my um, stapler anyway, my um, tackwise stapler. So I'll probably end up using them. Then we also were left with these drill bits. Now these look to be fairly good condition. There's a couple missing, but overall I think this will make quite a nice little set of drill bits. Now the container's a little broken, but that doesn't really matter. Because I think what's supposed to happen is they're supposed to sort of like hold out like that so that you can actually use them. Always nice to have spare drill bits though. We'll see if these are any good and if they're blunt or not. But they appear to be quite sharp. I mean, they look like they've had a fairly easy life. They don't look like they've been used particularly apart from these ones or that could just be some surface rust. 
So we'll have a look at those and see whether they're worth keeping. If not, we'll just get rid of them. But I think they'll be quite good. I can't see a manufacturer's name on these, so I'm guessing these are just sort of like a cheap set of drill bits, but we'll have a look and see what they're like. They then left this, which appears to be a Braddle. It looks to be in fairly good condition. It's made by Record, and it looks to be quite an old one as well. So I think this is quite a cool little thing to have. I'll have a look and see if I can find out anything about it. I have noticed, though, it's slightly bent if I just focus the camera. I don't think that's the end of the world. I can probably bend it back out. But quite cool to have something which I think might be quite an old record tool. So quite proud of that. I think that's quite cool to have something like that. So we'll see what that's like in the workshop. We were then left with this, which appears to be another braddle. This one looks to be a lot older. It's got a traditional sort of wooden handle with the um, ferrule here, which I'm not sure if it's missing or they just didn't put one on. But that's quite interesting, and I think this would be quite cool to restore. So I'll give it a full sand on the handle, put some cellulose sanding seal on it, and probably some oil or something like that. Or I might use some wax. I don't know what I'm going to use yet, but we'll have a look. And again, this needs some clean-up. If we have a look here, there's quite a lot of surface rust. But I think that'd be easy enough to clean up and I think it will be a great help in the workshop. Next is this, which is a clamp for a miter saw station. Um, one of the sort of hand ones in a frame. I have actually got a old fashioned miter saw that goes in a frame, so I'll probably put this on my one because it's actually quite a good clamp. So this will get used on my miter saw and I've already got one, but there's enough space to have one on each side. So that would just mean greater clamping pressure. So I'll definitely use this on the miter saw as long as this is the same size. Um, to put into the hole, but I think this would be quite cool to use on my miter saw. Then they left this, which I don't know if it's something for like a band saw or something like that. Some sort of belt. I won't be using this, but just thought I would show you nonetheless. I thought I'd show you every single thing that was in the metal cabinet. So, if anyone knows what this is for, let me know, but I'm assuming it's for some sort of tool or something like that. Or maybe a lawnmower, I don't know, but kind of cool. Just something else that was left there. Um, I've said about the staples, then there was a bag of thin nails. Um, I'll just end up using these, but I won't keep them in a the bag. I hate nails being in bags because you try and get some out and you just end up getting a bag split or you end up getting them all over your hand. So I'll pour these into a nice tub or something or like an organiser and then I can use those. So that's always handy to have and they'll definitely get used in the workshop. Then was this drill bit. So these are hole saws and these are the more old fashioned style. So essentially if you wanted to use the middle ring you would have to basically wiggle all of these out. They're very oily as you can see if you look at my hands, so I'm not going to do that, but basically you just get it to the right size and then you basically clip them back in and you can sort of twist them around. I've already got a vintage one of these, which is my grandpa's, but this one, I don't know, I'll probably just keep hold of this. And it's kind of cool to have, although I have got proper hole saws now, which are a rigid piece of metal which goes the whole way around. The only trouble is the with these is they're quite flimsy to be honest, and... I have had occasions where I've used one of these four and they've sort of like got stuck or whatever and then they're quite difficult to get out. So to be honest I probably won't use these as I don't think they're as safe as the modern type. So we'll see what they're like but I don't think I'll really end up using this particularly. But it's a nice thing to have anyway. So we're going to start with these which are some small F clamps. I think these are probably like 100mm clamps, maybe 150mm. Yeah, they're about 150 mil clamps. These are really handy to have. I've got four of these already, and one of which is broken. So these are a big help. I've already used these quite a lot on a few projects. I used them on the lathe cart just to hold some bits together whilst I was screwing them. So these are going to become really handy in the workshop, and they work, and they've got a nice little protective bit there for the wood. So I'm really happy that they left some clamps for me. You can never have enough clamps in a workshop. Then there was this, which is a vintage Stanley drill. I've already got two of these, I've got quite an old one and I've got a broken one, but this one works really well as you can see, it's got a really really good action on it, and it's in absolutely fantastic condition. It was in a box, but the box split apart whilst I was taking it out of the old rotten shed. So that's fine, but this is made by Stanley, and it's a fairly standard sort of drill here, but they're quite fun to use. I have used these before, I used these before I had a proper electric drill, so I'm quite familiar with these, and they're quite fun to use, but they can be quite difficult as well if you need to use a big drill bit but this would definitely get used occasionally I am planning on doing a project where I only use hand tools so that includes everything from drilling sawing sanding nothing can be done with any sort of electric power so I think that'd be really interesting so we'll probably end up using this on that 
and some other tools. So I'm definitely going to be using this at some stage on a build. But I think that hand tool only sort of furniture thing would be quite cool. I don't know what I'll make. Maybe like a little box or something. Or I might challenge myself and try and make a bigger piece of furniture. Then last but not least, and in my opinion the best find, is this record spoke shave. So I've always wanted a spoke shave and never bought one. So luckily they've left one here. Unfortunately these don't turn at all. So I'm going to have to see if I can get these off with a bit of WD-40. The blade appears to be quite sharp. I did do a little test on a piece of wood, but the blade is out far too far to cut with. So it means it was taking massive chips out of the wood. You want the blade to go in a little bit more than it is at the moment, but I can't adjust it at the moment. So once I've got this all cleaned up, I think this would be a really, really good tool. Like the colour, it's a record number A151 spoke shave. If anyone knows anything about this, let me know. I think it's going to be quite handy in the workshop, and I haven't got one at the moment, so I'm glad I now have. Always nice to have some hand tools, so I'll hopefully be using this on a project in the not too distant future. Well, I hope you've enjoyed having a look at all of the hand tools and bits and bobs that were left by the old owners of this house. It's quite nice to have some hand tools and some clamps and things that can get used, and it's quite interesting to see what people have left behind. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, pop them down in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching.